control, concentration, and strong hands. This is the second big time catch. Fires it into trap. Oh, catch. Oh, Jesse Matthews. Matthews again has a great catch. Throw into the end zone, and it is caught in the corner by Jesse Matthews. Former walk on. Johnson play action going to the end zone. Matthews caught it. Touchdown! Ball game! San Diego State is still unbeaten! Wow! Johnson pulls it. Fires open. Caught. Touchdown! Johnson has plenty of time. End zone. Matthews caught. Touchdown! Pulls it. Fires it. Matthews got it. Touchdown! Three to nine. Fires sideline. Oh. Escapes. Matthews is in. Touchdown. Going deep. Matthews up and got it and holds it. Terrific catch. Fires down the sideline. Oh. What a catch. Here at the Sons of Montezuma podcast, we live San Diego State football. Coming off a program best 12 wins last year, the Aztecs 100th season is full of even higher expectations from fans, coaches, and more importantly, themselves. Senior wide receiver number 45, Jesse Matthews, is no stranger to any of this. As a former walk-on at SDSU, Jesse has earned his place in the Aztecs program. He's a San Diegan, a hometown hero who played his high school football at Christian High in El Cajon. Largely under-recruited, Jesse worked his way onto the Aztecs program where he has won Offensive Scout Player of the Year, Outstanding Freshman of the Year, he's led the team in catches and receiving yards, and last season as a junior, his nine touchdown catches were the most by any Aztec receiver since Vincent Brown in 2010. Jesse was officially named one of two Aztec football offensive team captains, and he is one of our five Sons of Montezuma NIL team members. So we wanted to sit down and check in with Jesse before the season began. The place? The gym where Jesse and many other Aztec players put in so much hard work in the offseason. It's a full-on gym dedicated to building up the underdog and proving all naysayers wrong. Alex Johnson's Sports and Fitness in La Mesa, California. Okay, so I'm sitting down here with number 45, Aztecs wide receiver, Jesse Matthews. Yes, sir. This is phenomenal, man. I can tell this is where hard work gets done this isn't the gym i go to (laughs) not at all we're here at alex johnson sports and fitness here in san diego so tell us how did you come across this facility and and alex so i had a a teammate i played youth football with um coastal tritons scotty young he he trained here um and his dad is the one that reached out to my mom when i was in high school and said you know you got to get with alex this guy's the real deal um, he's going to help your son get better and develop into a better player, get stronger, faster. And I started coming here my junior year of high school after football, after the football season. And I was a little intimidated coming in because I heard these workouts are different. Like, it, it's a whole different beast when you come in here. So I was a little tentative when I first, first started coming here. But um, after a couple weeks, a couple months, I really got the feeling like, wow, I'm getting better. I feel, I'm making progress. And... Um, it's been it's been great ever since then and just to see my progress since I first came in Alex has a, has a video of me uh, catching on the jug machine and I look like a little boy but uh, <laughs> it's a uh, you put a helmet on me and the helmet's way too big look like a bobblehead <laughs> but it's uh, come a long way since then and Alex has been a great part 
um, of this journey and a big supporter of me. So we've already talked about your journey, hometown hero, San Diego Christian High. Yeah. Tell us about that a little more because going from there to here in this training facility yeah. to state, you know, that transition is not an easy one to make. Yeah. So for you to make those jumps here in this facility and feel yourself getting better, like what was the toughest part of the transition of going from Christian High to San Diego State? I think a lot of it was more mental than physical, just trying to change your mind and um, yeah, change your mindset on, on what you have to prepare for. And luckily for me, Alex has trained a lot of San Diego State guys before. And they were in here when I was training sometimes, and I kind of you know, overheard what they were talking about, the workouts they would do, the, the mental, um, how Coach Hall like, pushed you to your mental limits. And I knew that I would have to come in um, as a walk-on trying to prove something with a chip on my shoulder, um, be mentally strong, and just really establishing that work ethic and that mindset here. Um, as well as developing my physical strength and all those things like that, and my speed, but really my mental mindset and learning, you know, how to work hard. Um, a lot of that stems from from working in here and working with guys that have done that before. So um, I owe a lot of credit to this place for developing me. So before we got too far in, we wanted to bring on the man that Jesse and so many San Diego footballers pay a lot of credit to. And as soon as we got Alex mic'd up, he was ready to go. You could feel the energy that only a trainer could bring. So I'm using all this. I'm using all of this. Because his quarterback led the nation at one point in passing. In his high quarterback school. did. Jesse has a catch. He's bending backwards. It looks like a bat, like he's on a back to get the school. ball. So it's like ridiculous catches. But I was telling Jesse, like, man, I said, uh, the catches made you better. There was, there was a blessing. All those, all those crazy catches are normal to him. All look, that body control, this, right? Dude. That's the primo. That's yeah. the primo. Yeah, man, he's catching passes like that. And they're talking <laughs> about the receiver. Like, what kind of stuff is that? And his quarterback led the nation. From Christian High, he led the nation in passing. Man. Yeah. I need to put another mic on Jesse right now. Like, <laughs> even, no, though, no, no, yeah, even though he's no, out no. the frame. Even no, though he's out so the frame. Much, I was like, ah, oh, keep it under. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I had a couple of receivers in like Tim Patrick for the Broncos. Mm. He said he had the best hands. I have a Zill Street play for the, for the Carolina Panthers. He don't drop ball either. He got good hands, but nobody catches the ball like Jesse. <laughs> and the reason why is, um, I believe is just because um, his baseball background okay. and track, tracking that fastball and tracking the ball just so fast, uh, baseball is easy. So he's so used to that, that speed. Like, it's just normal. Like, all these catches... He's all about hand-eye coordination, like all day. Like he does stuff you can't see. And the ball is smaller. It's and it's it moves away, it move away yeah. faster. Yeah. Oh yeah, it goes, like it goes off the bat. It goes 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he's trying to like, catch it. Yeah, like if, and it's the same thing. Your hand goes to the ball, even hitting. Yeah, and you're still bringing your hand. You're bringing the bat to the ball. Hand and eye, hand and eye coordination. Yeah. Same thing. You know what I mean? When people say that baseball. I was like, there's no way. Hand and eye coordination is everything. You know what I mean? So I mean, is that? Do you think that's the biggest factor, baseball, in his oh, in his body control, no, his no, no, catching? No, 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 I think he was blessed. Like that's the reason. Like when I first met, like he was little. He was mm. little catching balls. I'm like, dude, you got a blessing. Like, come on, everything you did. Like you watch his plays, you're like, you got like an angel with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> because I don't even, be, I don't take no kind of credit. If you might actually be like, dude, I didn't get him better. Like I believe that when I work with these athletes, like I'm, they have this gift, and I'm helping them unwrap it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the theory. Is like. We're gonna help you unwrap your gift because you have a gift. Because there's some kids I tell them, hey, you better off going get a pencil and being a scientist. I mean, with them. <laughs> yeah. I don't want their money. I'm like, right. you don't have a shot. Your your feet are pointed those directions out like a pig, penguin. You're not gonna be able, to, you know. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, you just don't have it. Or we have these five <laughs> these five five linemen that weigh two fifty. I'm like, man, that's you're not a lineman. So that's that's me, man. I'm it happens a lot, right? It happens a lot, right? <laughs> and the coaches tell them like, get fat, get get bigger, get bigger, get bigger. I'm like. I mean, how big you get? You five five, man. Like, come on. <laughs> I be truthful with them. Like, I be truthful with the kids. Like, really, you have to. Because I'm telling you, they grow older, right. and they look back and they tell you. They tell the truth. Like, hey, he did me wrong, or he talked about me, or mm. oh, he was real with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So you've been here ten years. Yeah, I've been here. Yeah, it's probably like I don't gotta look at my lease. I don't really look no, but it's around ten years, for sure. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's an awesome testament. I, I like the gym, man. Like, you gotta have a purpose for this gym. You gotta oh, yeah. know what you're aiming for. So, I mean, you, you, you showed us the video, you showed us, you know, what people were laughing and didn't yeah. really see it, but you right. saw it. You yeah. saw the natural ability. Right. And, you know, tell us about And his about drive, like, he, yeah. he would never quit. Like, he don't yeah. care. He don't care if my laughed at him. He didn't care about nothing. Anything, uh, 
anything mentally like you do, he'll, he'll overcome it. He'll just keep coming back. He don't. He's never late. He's always here on time. Early you look up, he's walking through the door. He's walking through the door. And the walk-in, the walk-on, that's what we were calling it, the walk-on. <laughs> it's funny, I remember the day when his mom came to me, she was like, he was playing baseball. I like, man, you got a better shot being a receiver, you know, because your hand and coordination. And they're like, he's little, he's little, he's little, so he can put the weight on, that's nothing, you know what I mean? And um, when we started talking about smaller receivers and all that, and that's how we try to make, compare him to, like, uh, somebody that you can look at and like, oh, man, he's that big, or he's that, he runs that speed, or he does this, and he made it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you find them in the NFL all the time. There's guys like that just don't don't take no for an answer. But sometimes we'll come in here like, and I'm training him. He's like, man, why is he wasting all this time with AJ? He all the waste all this time with um, Jesse. He's not going to play. He's not going to play. You waste your time. Look at him. He's too little. Look at him. He's, he's not, you know, he's, they're laughing, like really like laughing at him, you know? Like uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, you mm. know what I mean? Like he has an art. Like he, he actually had, <laughs> he, he actually had an ability that they couldn't see, you know? And he's, he, and, um, and I'm proud of him, man, because he never quit, like, no matter what, you know. Um, and he's really going to make it. Like, I don't have a doubt about it that if the NFL team gives him a shot, he's going to be he's gonna be great. He's not going to be just making a team, but he's going to be a great receiver, you know, because he's, he's always working on working, 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 working. So tell us, because you got few guys in the league right now that you've worked with. So, you know, I don't think you're, you're speaking out of turn when you say something like what you're saying. So mm -hmm. give us some of the names of, of some of the guys that you've had in the um, facility you work with. Well, we have 20, we have uh, 23, 23 active players. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember, it's hard to remember their names, but I'll try to, uh, uh, Carolina Panthers, we have uh, Brandon Zilstra, Tim Patrick, uh, Denver Broncos. I remember Tim Patrick was in here and he was undrafted too. So that gives a lot of stuff. A lot of my guys are undrafted. They really had to work for it. Yeah. He came, he came back from, um, Tim Patrick came back six times, released from a team, release, 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 and he kept on trying, mm. kept on playing. We just kept saying, what are, you, what are you not doing? What are you not doing? It was old thing. They really didn't trust his leg because he broke his leg in college. Okay. Uh, we had Brunskill. Uh, Brunskill, another guy. Uh, he was undrafted. He played, he's a starter uh, lineman for the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, sir. And Brunskill, when he came, uh, he's, a, he's another guy, hard worker, smart guy. Brunskill's smart, you know what I mean? And that's where you don't get like... Shout like, out to Brunskill. You gotta be smart, you, know, you, you gotta be smart. Even that receiver, if you know your, even if you know your route, during that play, the route could change because if a DB moves here or moves there or anything during the play, you gotta react just like that. So it's not about just running your route and catching the ball. There's so much more to it. It's, and I have guys out here out there, they run fast, but they run fast if I tell them to run there, like run to that spot. They can run fast, but if, if anything's in the way, they gotta think, it slows them down. Jesse plays fast, like he reacts fast. He knows the game, and he works on it constantly. He's gonna be, he's gonna be good. I was gonna ask, like, what is what is a, a couple things that Jesse does in here in particular that that's really, uh, you know, helped him take his game up? Uh, number one is uh, conditioning. Mm -hmm. Like the name, the, the one thing is, and that's with anything. Like um, to me, I don't care. I mean, speed is great, but if you if you only can run one play fast, then that's not gonna work. You gotta be able to run it continuously. And uh, so conditioning is very important. Um, if, if you're tired doing anything, if you're tired and you're brushing your teeth, you're not gonna do a good job. If you're, if you're tired and you're hungry, you're not gonna do a good job. You know what I mean? You, you can't be tired. And that's the thing, like you can't be tired. So we put that in, like you, you, you gotta be able to go 100%, 100%, you know what I mean, all the time. And I'm never too tired to eat. That's number one, right, yeah. But, I mean, come on, you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't chew your food enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> Drop my head in the cereal right? bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so conditioning is, like, very important. And he's, he's very conditioned. So I was on the jug machine, and, and I was trying, and, I, and they were laughing at Jesse. So, and I was like, man, Jesse, get on the jug machine. He's not dropping nothing. I'm not even telling the ball, like, really, he's just psh, catching like a fly swat, snatching him out of the air. And they're like, and they're still telling him, he's not going to, they have another receiver there. This, there was another receiver there. Jesse just kept competing and playing, you know, and that's how that's how it went. Jesse's routes. That's great. Jesse's routes are yeah. tight, are tight. Yeah. Phenomenal. You know what I mean? And there's so many guys that run fast speed, fast times, but they can't stop and go. You know what I mean? Like, because this is the thing yeah. about this is the thing about track and field. And coaches all over the place, they push it. All run track, run track, run track. But track makes you run fast, mm. but it doesn't teach you how to stop. You run and you coast. Mm. You run and you coast. You run and you coast and you take your time to stop. Football, you gotta be bam, stop, yeah. go, bam, stop, go, damn. He don't, he don't get that. You know what I mean? That quick you, acceleration. You bam. accelerate fast. That's why most mm. of the track guys, just like Tariq, um, Tariq, he, he he doesn't run great routes. He, if you notice him in the red zone, he doesn't get open. Mm. You know what I mean? 
he but he'll open. It. But if you get him an open field, he can just take off. You're not gonna keep up with him or give him a short pass. He'll take off. But his routes, like he really has to work. He needs to work on his routes. Cooper Cup ran four seven, but he's gonna leave you. Like you know, like he'll, yeah. he'll make space. He does all that, and that's, in the red zone, he's gonna kill you. He's gonna get open in the red zone. You know what I mean? That's the difference. You yeah. can tell, and that's what we try to do. We use the. We used the, the pods. That was after Jesse. Jesse's in college now. We started using the pods because um, we uh, we use the blue pods, and the pods are our lights that flash, and you run to them. They react. because oh, okay. Because uh, if you put some cones down on the ground, which everybody's been using for years, uh, you, you end up like you end up memorizing your drills. You know what I mean? Like if I put four cones down, you do a four-cone drill, you'd have done it over and over and over and over. Now, if I put these lights on, and you got to keep your head on a swivel yeah. and respond and run to it, it makes your neurological system think faster, you know what I mean? It makes you respond faster, and that's what happens. In sports, you gotta react. The baseball comes, you gotta react, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of guys that are not as fast in sports, but they react faster. The reaction speed is quick, and that gets you to, to their faster, whether it's rebounding a ball, whether it's catching a ball, yeah. whether it's tackling somebody, you're reacting, your reaction time um, makes you play faster, you know what I mean? It's just like learn, learning the playbook. If you don't know the playbook, if you play slow, you're thinking too much. But if you know the play, you know where you go, you know where to be at, it's pop, 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 you know? Yeah, because it's not, everything's not scripted, not the reaction of the ball, like no. things change. You're no. not going to be memorizing movements. Even if you run a slant, if you game. run a slant and the linebacker, the corner, the cornerback moves, yeah. you know, you got to figure out, figure out a way to get around them, you know what I mean? Mm. You got to do something immediately, you know what I mean? The coach can't help you, you got to respond. So a lot of guys don't make it, they have all that athleticism, but they don't have the, they don't have the, the brain to do it, to play like that. That's why they get sent home. Great athletes. There's some great athletes out of San Diego, period. And you see them, they get cut, and I'm like, man, like you can't, you can't, they, they can't play fast. I'm, ex- I'm excited, man. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I don't know how I'm gonna get to that first game because the tickets gonna be hard. But, <laughs> hey, man, man, I, man, I gotta get to that game, man. It's gonna be some games I don't go to, you know, because I'm te- I'm a teary guy. Like, you know what I mean? Because, because some, because these guys, man, you just don't know. Like, it's not just watching football. It's like, you see all the stuff, like. How, People don't see how hard they work. Like they really need to go into gyms like these kids. Yeah. All you see is the fans, the fans, the cheerleaders, the Gatorade, you know what I mean? The Gatorade, the the, the swag, you know, the swag mm. uniform. But they don't see the hard work. They don't be seeing like, man, I'll be like, get up, you know, like they don't see when his uh, strength coach was yelling at him because he had the wrong socks color on when he was a freshman. It's just like he went in on him, you know what I mean? They don't see that. And they, I think the kids need to see it because they can't take it. I have kids in here, they're, they're with their mom and I tell them like, Man, it's gonna be tough. Like they sit down in the gym. I like don't ever sit down in the gym because you can't do it on the next level. And um, man, man, Jesse, man, I'm telling you, like he's a sponge. Like he's gonna be fine. Like I can't. I'm excited. I'm excited about this year, but I'm more excited about the draft next year. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? The draft next year. And I got I got a little high school helmet right there. Somebody offered me two grand for it. And I said, you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to lock that somewhere. <laughs> hey, because I told him, I said, um, on draft day, I'm going to have that helmet like in my lap. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't wait. Wherever he goes, I'm like, hey, to see. I'm never going to get rid of it, though, you know? But he's been we were really close, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, I called, sometimes people, I was like, you know, I'm close to Jesse. So he don't know he'll be asleep. I call him like 5 in the morning. He'll answer the phone. No matter what. No matter when I call Jesse, he'll answer the phone. Like, someone got to I just, I'll be trying to prove something. Like, with my fiance, I'm like, yeah, I mean, Jesse, that's my dude. She's like, you your dude? Like, yeah, that's, she said, you act like you love him more than me. I said, he, he always answers the phone. You don't be answering all the time. <laughs> that dependability. Yeah, that's my guy, man. Like, he pushes me too. Like, I get stressed out. I got little issues. Like, and um, they don't know. They don't know that they, they, they give me drive too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I get up at 3 o'clock. I've been doing this since 1984 before I went to the Marine Corps. And, uh, dude, I be tired now. I'm 56 now. And, uh, I still get up at the same time, and uh, and uh, these guys like I'll never let them. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna never let them down. If they say be here at this time. I'm gonna be there because I tell them like you gotta do the same thing. Mm. I can't drink. I can't be. I don't drink. I haven't drank my whole life, but I don't drink. I don't do that, and I don't really. I don't hang out and all this stuff. And if I did hang out, I'll be here at three o'clock because I tell them the same thing. You know what I mean? Like Man. you gotta be at practice at this time in the morning. So while they're in high school, I try to train them uh, four or five o'clock in the morning so they get in the habit of. Uh, the habit, of, the habit of training at a time, and don't miss a day. I mean, there's, there's guys I trained for probably like, maybe more than ten years, and I never missed a workout with them. Wow. And that's what I'm trying to prove to them, like, you could do, you could do it too, you know. And uh, they push me too, because sometimes being that be I'm like, man, I don't feel like going in, but I gotta go, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're gonna say, hey, close, what happened? You know, like, you know, they, they pull, they pull my car too.
That's that dependability. You guys depend on each other. Right. You right. know, as as much as we don't we don't see it. This it is, me though, man, because you had to remember like these guys are walk-ons. Yeah. And these guys yeah. are walk-ons and undrafted. Most of the guys out of here are walk-ons and undrafted. Like they're guys that uh, they're the underdog. They're the one that people turn like, he go man, waste your time. Yeah. And everybody in San Diego is funny. If you look at the San Diego, San Diego has a habit of uh, reaching out to the five, the guys that are going to be great. Like I have a guy. I have a kid and he's one of the fastest in the nation. Coach is already calling and bothering him. I don't do that. Mm. I don't bother that kid. Like, you know what I mean? I just tell him, like, always have to coach you. Are they going to develop? Are they going to make you better? And that's the whole thing with me. Like, my whole goal is to get the person better. I try to find their weaknesses and I try to find whatever their weaknesses are and try to improve them if you can. Yeah. Sometimes your weakness is short. We can't get you taller. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. But whatever you can find that make that you're weak at, we try to strengthen it. Alex, appreciate you. Hey, Thanks thank for opening you. the doors and letting us do this here, Anytime, man. Anytime, man. Really Anytime we talk to him, let me know. Absolutely. Can I bring you? Oh, you only do bonus. Who was that? Just only San Jose State players? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm diehard, man. You don't I'm want to avoid, like, avoid these players? Oh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah. Talking with Alex was great, and I can see why he gets the most out of his athletes. But now, let's get back to Jesse. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your upbringing, right? So I've met your family, awesome family, and you say they train here as well. Yeah. So obviously this is a very athletic family. Give us a little <laughs> background on, on your folks, man. Um, you know, my parents grew up playing sports, obviously. Uh, my mom played softball. Um, my dad played a lot of sports when he was younger, but then he trans transitioned into surfing. Um, but he's always had a love and passion for um, all sports, but specifically football. Even my mom, you know, she's supported me in, in all my different uh, sports, baseball, uh, basketball, but football has always been the big thing in our family. Um, so growing up, they, they were always super supportive of me, um, supported my dreams of, of becoming a, you know, collegiate football player and then hopefully one day become a professional football player. And they'd always ask me when I was younger, like, you know, what do you want to be when you're older? Uh, a football player. Okay, what do you want to be if you can't be a football player? Um, a football player, you know, <laughs> so that was kind of my, my mindset um, growing up and they were always really supportive of me. Um, they made sacrifices. Um, they still make sacrifices for me, so I've had a really good support system around me and um, yeah, I've been very, very lucky. My whole family, extended family, aunts, uncles, they always have loved football and um, Two, I've been fortunate to have two of my uncles go through the process. Um, they both played in the NFL. Zeke Moreno went to USC, was a linebacker from Castle Park. Um, but yeah, went to USC, then got drafted by the Chargers. Um, played at home for a little bit, then bounced around in Miami, I think. And a few different teams, I don't really remember because I was a little younger. Uh, and then he played in the CFL. And my other uncle, Moses Moreno, was a quarterback. Also went to Castle Park, went to Colorado State, then was drafted by the Bears and uh, played for the NFL for a little bit. So having that that um, that bloodline and and yeah. these ties to the NFL and um, family members that have been there and done that has has been awesome for me. I remember going to Charger games when I was really really little yep. um, at Qualcomm and just being in that atmosphere since you know since I was three or four years old, um, and maybe even before that. But yeah, just being around the game of football for that long has definitely had an impact on me. And those, those guys have definitely had an impact on me. <laughs> I can't forget about Christina, of course. Like, just what a, what a great personality. I, I've had a chance to meet her, and I really didn't know that she was such a baller, a baller. at San Diego State. Yeah. So share with us about Christina. Yeah, she's also went to Castle, I think, Almost all my family went to Castle Park, but yeah, uh, yeah. she was a baller. Um, she went to San Diego State, and she led them to, I want to say, two or three Mountain Western Conference championships. Um, and they weren't too doing too great before she got there, so um, she had a big impact on that culture and on that team, and she's a baller. And she's someone that's also very supportive of me, helps me in a lot of different ways. She's, she was vital um, in helping set up the camp and finding different sponsors and things like that. So. You know, she's also part of my support system, someone that traveled to every game in Carson last year, um, as well as a few other family members. But she's, she's a good person and um, a great athlete, too. 
So let's talk about the Jesse Matthews football camp that you just recently had. I was able to be there and see all the all the kids that were there having a great yeah. time, and a lot of other football players were there as as well from the team with you. Yeah. So who was all there uh, in support on the team with you? Yeah, we had um, myself, Tyrell Shavers, T.J. Sullivan, Jordan Bird, uh, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon, Michael Shawcroft, and Darius Hyde, and Alma of uh, Uluwabe. So. A lot of those guys are, are key players for us, um, and they've been there, done that before, and, and I think they offered a lot of insight to those kids, and it was a really unique experience um, to have all those guys out there that I think a lot of them could be playing at the next level someday, yeah. if that's what they desire. Um, but there's a lot of football knowledge um, on that field, so I think it was a really unique experience for those kids, and I was, I was happy to kind of be a, be a part of it and host it. Yeah, all the kids came out and had a great time. Um, I had a great time. I think all my teammates really enjoyed it too. So just to, you know, kind of see the, the look on the kids' faces when they when they look up to you and remember when you were in that position was something that's really special. And um, you know, after it was over, I was kind of had this this feeling of just of joy, of just fulfillment, um, being in that position to give back. And it's something that really ignited a, a passion in me, or a light in me, um, to want to continue to do this. So I hope to do that for, for years to come and just give those kids opportunity to, you know, learn some football skills, um, learn from Division One athletes, and more importantly, just have fun. It was a lot of work, but it was yeah. definitely something that was rewarding. And even the day after, I was like, it's almost like, a, like a, you come down from it, from that feeling like, wow, that was like, that was awesome. <laughs> like I want to do that again so it was a lot of work but it was worth it I think like what what is important to you Jesse like what what do you value what what do you believe in in this uh, in this time yeah um, I'm a believer um, that Christ died for our sins and um, God gave his only son for us so we may have eternal life um, so my relationship with God is something that I've worked on um, a lot growing up and I went to a Christian high school, obviously, I feel like I grew a lot in my in my spirituality and my um, my faith. So I'm someone that you know is a, is a believer that God has something destined for you, and whatever that is, um, it's going to get done. Mm-hmm. Whatever His will is, it will be done. So my relationship with God is something that's very important to me. Um, something that I try to really make a priority. Thank Him for you know the opportunities that He gives me and people he surrounds me with so that's kind of my my belief okay one of the things we talked about in the last time we had you on was golf yeah and we know that's a big passion of yours right and that was actually a question somebody wanted me to ask so if you had three people that you could have a game of golf with mm-hmm. non-golfers okay who would that be wow i know steph curry's a good golfer uh so steph i didn't even thought of this before like Oh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, okay. Because I've seen him on, on the match and, and all that stuff. He's a trash talker. <laughs> um, and this, there's a YouTuber I watch. Uh, they're called Good Good. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a golfing YouTube channel. It's like there's a group of like six of them. And they go out, make videos, play 3v3, do all these different challenges and stuff. It's really fun to watch. It's like my main um, YouTube channel that I watch. <laughs> Whenever I eat food or Put, a, or, no, put something on the on YouTube while I eat. Yeah. That's always what it is. So I see you're majoring in communications? Yep. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So, I mean, I, I know we talked a little bit. Um, so after your playing days are done, I mean, could you see yourself, how do you see, do you see yourself using that or, or working in some kind of a sports-related uh, area? Definitely something sports-related. That's always been my number one passion growing up. Um, but with a communication degree and it being so versatile, I feel like you could use a communication degree for a lot of different jobs and um, different aspects of life. But I would want to do something in sports, media, um, whether that be broadcasting or um, on a news station or... Like an analyst. Yeah, like an analyst. Mm-hmm. Like dream job like NFL Network or ESPN, just being in... in um, something like that where I can just break down film, give my yeah. input. Someone that's been there and has watched a lot of film and, and knows what it takes 
um, I think that'd be a really, really cool job. And that's like my dream job after, after football. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about Snapdragon Stadium. Okay. Because, dude, this season is the inaugural season. Everybody's excited in Aztec Nation for our brand new home. You get to break the building in. So, I mean, what, what does playing in that stadium mean to you? And, and how excited are you to, to get your first chance to run out of that tunnel? I think it's really, really special. And I don't think I fully grasp the opportunity that I have. You know, being the very first team, my senior year, it's our 100th season. Just how, how perfectly everything's really coming together is, is special. Um, and to break in that new stadium and be back home in San Diego after, after two years, coming off an historic season. I think, you know, everything's lining up for it to be a good season. Now it's just up to us to put the work in um, and put out a good product and win some games. But I'm very, very excited. I've been, that date, September 3rd, has been in my head um, for, for probably nine months now, um, or eight months. But uh, it's really exciting, so I can't wait to be in front of our home fans and show them what we can do. Does, does it start feeling like that now, now that like you've been playing a few years at State, you got your, your uh, notoriety out there in San Diego, do you feel like, you know, it's like, oh man, it's Jesse Matthews like around uh, town and stuff? No, no, <laughs> I still feel like a normal person. Um, it's cool when I tell people I play for San Diego State and then I tell them who I am, and then they go, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, they say nice things about me, things like that, but I'm not a celebrity by any means, but <laughs> It's cool to have that support uh, from the community. They say that's number 45 right there, number 45. Yeah. They know who you're talking about now. Yeah. You got your name out there, man. It's a big year coming up, mm -hmm. senior year. Like, how do you feel going into that year, man? I'm really excited about the team we have, um, the culture that we've developed over the summer, and just seeing the pieces start to come together. And I feel like we have a lot of momentum going into this this uh, fall camp, and I'm excited. Like we're mentally, just mentally, where our team is at. Um, I feel like we're, we're ready to attack this season, attack this fall camp, and you know, come out of the out of the gates firing. Well, I know when we met with you earlier in the year, it was the big announcement, right? The NIL deal, mm -hmm. the T-shirt jersey. It was like that was a long time ago. Yeah. Now we're in the heat of the summer. Yeah. Season's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's a different mentality, right? It's a different mindset. Yeah, now we're sh that was like around around spring ball time um, when we're just trying to kind of perfect our craft, um, you know, work on fundamentals and things like that, develop the young guys. But now it's now it's serious. Now it's t it's go time. Um, no more, you know, kind of waiting for these young guys to develop. Now it's time. If you're ready, you're ready. If you're not, then you know you get left behind a little bit. But yeah. Um, I feel like we've made a lot of progress um, as a senior class and as, as uh, a younger class, as these sophomores and, and freshmen have developed through spring and through summer. Um, so I think we've got a lot of talent this year. We have a lot of hype around our team, which could be you know, a good thing, but could also be a negative thing. So um, it's going to you know, fall on the, on the shoulders of the seniors on how we handle that hype and, and um, you know, how we approach every game. I mean, has your role in the offense changed any in, in this year coming up within the offense? I believe so. Um, I think Coach Heck, Hecklinski, is going to make a, a priority to try to get me the ball more. Um, I know that towards the end of the year, I had some success, and um, I was getting a lot of targets, which you know, kind of helped, resulted in some team success. So I think um, I kind of earned that trust from him because I had a good year in 2019 before he got there. Um, and then 2020 was the COVID year. It was kind of just a weird year. Yeah. But I think I kind of really proved myself and, and showed him that he could trust to kind of be that guy for him, uh, that security blanket, and be more, um, more of a focal point in the offense. So I'm looking forward to this year. Um, we got a, a gunslinger now, Braxton. Um, we got some talented receivers, uh, all the young guys coming up, so it uh, should be good. 
So the Aztecs finished the year last year with the most wins in program history, 12 wins. So coming off of a year like that, what does a successful season in your mind look like? Well, you mentioned we won 12, 12 games last year, um, but we didn't win the most important game, which was the Mountain West uh, Conference Championship game. So it was a historical season last year, and it was great that we won 12 games and set that mark, but in all reality, we're not, satis we're not satisfied with that. Our goal is, is winning 22 and winning that 22nd conference championship. Um, so success this year would be winning the championship. Um, doesn't matter how we get there. If we don't even set the mark for 12 wins or whatever, but if we end the season getting a ring, yeah. that'll be successful. Um, so that's our mindset. And it's also important not to get complacent um, because we won 12 games last year, set, set that franchise record. Don't try to ride that high for too long. That's last year. That was a whole different team. Um, this is a whole different team this year coming in. And we have to prove ourselves and what we can do. I mean, what, what do you do to kind of block out all that noise, all the expectations, and prepare for this season coming up and what's at hand? I think the preseason awards are an honor. It's definitely a cool thing to be recognized like that. But it doesn't really mean, mean anything until, you know, I think the postseason awards are what really, yeah. really matter. So um, people will forget if you're a preseason All-American if, if you don't perform. So um, I think you got to, you know, we have all these expectations. Um, but as a team, I don't think anybody expects more out of us than, than we do. I think we want to win every single game. That's, that's our mindset. We want to win the championship. We want to compete with these uh, these big time programs, these power five schools. Expectations and hype are really what you make of it. You got to minimize, um, you know, the hype or um, kind of block out the noise and really just lock in on what you need to do. You know, focus on your job, focus on taking care of business and um, everything will take care of itself. That's really what I believe and that's the kind of the kind of mindset I'm trying to set um, for the rest of the team as well as well as the other seniors. Yeah. So, so is Cooper Cup like that's that's the that's the model, the model receiver. Who who's who's the receiver that you really pattern yourself off of? Probably Cooper Cup. He's a little taller than me, um, a little bit bigger, but I feel like we have similar, you know, attributes. And he's a really cerebral guy. He has he knows the game really well. Um, you could tell just in his route running and um, you know how how he plays. He just he knows his strengths and his weaknesses, and he and he plays off of that. Um, he knows he's not the fastest guy, but he knows he can do certain things to deceive the the DB. And um, he's also a really good red zone target because that speed doesn't matter as much in the red zone. That's when you really separate yourself, and everyone has to play kind of the same speed um, when you get inside the 20 yard line, 15 yard line. So he's someone that I watch a lot. Um, I try to model my game after. Um, even guys like Julian Edelman that are a little smaller. Um, Hunter Renfro is also a really good one. He yeah. was a walk-on, obviously. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's similar to me in a lot of aspects, I think. But, you know, he's a great route runner, knows his strengths and weaknesses, and, and plays off of that. And he's had great success. So tell us a little bit about your coaches, because this is a big year coming in. Um, you know, Coach Coop is – I've got, I had a chance to meet him, actually, and – he used a word to describe you. He said, Jesse Matthews, that guy's like a Navy SEAL. He's like an assassin out there on the field. He actually said that. Mm -hmm. What can you say about Coach Coop and what he means to that wide receiver core that you have there? Coach Coop is one of the most genuine and just overall just a good human being that I've ever met. He wants the best for you. Um, he treats everyone with respect. And just hearing the lessons that he teaches us, um, not just about football, but just about life, is, is really something that I appreciate and um, I don't take for granted at all. Um, he's someone that's been another, um, you know, a vital part of my journey in developing me and spending hours with me. And um, I would go to him if needed any help with football or 
or life or anything of that matter. Um, so Coach Coop is probably my favorite coach of all time and just one of my favorite people of all time. Um, been a big supporter of me and just a great guy. So I can't say enough good things about him and the impact that he's, that he's had on me. Coach Hoke is also a great guy and he's a, he's a player's coach. He's someone that you're very comfortable being around. Um, you know, you don't really tense up when he, when he walks around. He's kind of, you know, he's a friendly guy. Um, but he definitely commands his respect as well. And he's someone that's very proven in, in college football. Um, and you just respect him for, for what he's done in the, in the business and in, in college football. But you know, he's, he's a lighthearted guy and uh, it's, a good, it's a good atmosphere at practice and uh, in the building. So he keeps it light, um, but when it's time to get serious, we know that and um, we respect that. So I think it's a good, good balance. I just want to, it's hard for me to express it, but like I've had a lot of people um, in my journey to, to get where I'm at today, and I still have a lot of long way to go in my journey, but up to this point I've had um, so many people that have been supportive of me and have always had um, my best interest in their mind and in their heart, and I truly appreciate that, and I don't take that for granted. Um, my parents, um, Alex, Coach Coop, Coach Hoke, the entire program, my teammates, all my teammates that I've, I've played with, um, the receiving room, um, guys like BJ Busby, um, Kobe Smith, um, Elijah Cody. I mean, there's so many guys that I could thank for helping me become who I am as, as a player, but also as a person. Um, so I'm, I just feel so blessed to, to be around these people. Um, that support me and I thank God every day for for you know this this opportunity that I have and and taking me to this point in my journey and you know I, my whole my whole reason why I keep going and my why um, is is to make those people proud and um, to pay them back for the hours they've put into me and the belief they've put in me um, and to prove those people right um, that you know I do have something that they saw in me that I can, I can be everything that I want to be. So, so thank you to those people, and um, I appreciate you. And um, I thank you for your support and taking me on on the Sons of Montezuma team, um, having me on the podcast. So, I'm grateful. I'm blessed. Um, I want to keep this this journey going. It feels like a dream, uh, and I don't want to wake up anytime soon. So. I'm going to keep going and keep working hard. So thank you.